Welcome back, Star Wars fans, to the Hyperspace Database. I'm Jonesy the Mandalorian, your host here with today's topic, the Razor Crest. The Razor Crest was a customized ST-70 assault gunship developed prior to the rise of the Empire, and was flown by the Mandalorian Din Djarin in the Mandalorian TV show. The Crest was roughly 87 feet long and 60 feet wide. It possessed sublight engines and a hyperdrive, but what those specifications were, we're not told. Though it would not be unreasonable to assume it would have similar stats to other ships of its size. It also possessed deflector shields and other defensive systems, like hidden storage compartments for bounty hunting purposes, as well as a top side escape pod, and an optional hidden rear blaster turret. It was able to be flown by one person, but normally was crewed by at least two, a pilot and a co-pilot. Though the co-pilot functions could be handled by an astromech droid. Mando didn't trust droids, so many of the ship's functions were routed to the main pilot station, where he could control them all from one location. Mando also had a remote installed in his gauntlet, which allowed him to access limited ship functions remotely, like a remote start, lights, and door locks. The ST-70 was a military patrol craft originally, and was developed prior to the Empire, as they were considered pretty outdated by the time of the New Republic. The standard ST-70 possessed only two laser cannons, as it was mainly a patrol ship, meant to deter pirates and small force invaders, not fight full-scale prolonged battles. The Razor Crest kept much of the original features of the ST-70, though some custom modifications were made to assist in the bounty hunting trade of Din Djarin, like a portable carbon freezing unit. The ship not only served as a transport vessel for his bounties, but also functioned as the mobile living quarters for the Mandalorian, as he frequently wandered from job to job, never really settling down. Where Din Djarin acquired the crest, and when, are a mystery at this point, though we do know that he primarily operated in the Outer Rim territories for collecting bounties, mainly to avoid Imperial entanglements on the more populated Mid-Rim worlds and Core worlds. We are first introduced to the Mandalorian and the Razor Crest on the frozen world of Maldo Kreese, where the bounty hunter is chasing a Mithral for a job with the Bounty Hunters Guild. After a harrowing adventure involving a walrus-like creature called the Ravenak, the Razor Crest broke orbit and returned to the Bounty Hunters Guild on the planet Navarro. In order to transport the Mithral to Navarro without him attempting to escape, Mando used an onboard carbon freezing chamber to keep him locked up which he had apparently used several other times to capture other targets. Interestingly, unlike other bounty hunting vessels like the Slave One or Houndstooth for example, Mando preferred to use carbon freezing for his targets instead of keeping them in holding cells, which was an efficient way to transport prisoners, if they survived the freezing process that is, which in a mobile unit was only 66%. The interior of the Razor Crest was split into two different levels with the cockpit on the topmost level, and a main cargo bay on the lower level, which also housed a small storage bay, a refresher station, and a hidden weapons locker, where Mando kept most of his other blasters and other bounty hunting tools. The Razor Crest was involved in many more adventures throughout the Mandalorian TV show, which saw Din Djarin traveling all across the galaxy with the force-wielding child Grogu. The Crest traveled to the desert planet Arvala 7, where Din met the Ugnaught Kuil, and rescued the child from bounty hunters. Though when he returned to the Razor Crest, he found that Jawas had completely dismantled it and stripped it for parts. After an exchange of parts for a dangerous hunt, the Crest was repaired, and Din flew off with Grogu to return him to the client for the bounty. Mando had a change of heart though after he delivered the child to his Imperial captors, and after a hasty rescue, went on the run with the kid in tow. This led to many adventures aboard the Razor Crest, from space dogfights against fellow bounty hunters to prison breaks for extra black market cash, both Mando and Grogu had their fair share of adventures together. As often as the Crest was flying, it was also often crashing, as the ship was damaged in dogfights with bounty hunters, falling through ice caverns escaping from X-Wing pilots, and splashing down in the ocean after a rapid re-entry into atmosphere. After this last mishap, Mando paid a local Mon Calamari to fix up the ship, though it set him back a thousand credits, and the repair job was mediocre at best. The Crest would then need a more full repair job, and so Mando returned to Navarro for a full overhaul, in return for helping the Guildmaster eliminate a local Imperial garrison. This would lead the Mandalorian to seek out the former Jedi Padawan Ahsoka Tano on the planet Corvus, where she directed him to seek out an old Jedi world of Tython, where Grogu could reach out with the Force and try to connect with other Jedi. Mando and Grogu went to Tython, and the duo traveled to the top of an ominous mountain, 
since the Razor Crest was too large to fit on the peak. Mando did not expect any company, so he left the ship unguarded and unsecured. This would prove to be a costly mistake, though, as Moff Gideon would ambush the pair, and with one blast from his light cruiser, destroyed the Razor Crest and reduced it to a pile of rubble. The only things that survived the blast were the Beskar spear Mando had gained on Corvus and the small control knob that Grogu had played with before. While the Razor Crest was reduced to a smoking ruin and no parts were salvageable, the memory of this light gunship would live on in the solitary Mandalorian Din Djarin. And who knows, maybe another rare ST-70 may appear in the future, ready to be the mobile command center of the wandering Mandalorian. If you get a chance, I would highly recommend watching this behind the scenes journey into the design of the Razor Crest by ILM VFX. It's just an incredible look into the concept design of the ship and making models to show on screen. Definitely give it a watch. Also, check out this great video made by Half Screen that dissects the ship and shows off the different layers in a great 3D animation. Want to know more about great Star Wars topics like this one? Stick around to the end for some secret trivia, hit those like and subscribe buttons, and the bell to never miss an episode. Be sure to chat with me in the comments because I really like talking to you guys. Super special shout out to my Gold Captain Patreon supporters, Nick Sutphin, Miss2003, and Matthew Scott. Your support is so, so important and you keep the show going. Thank you so much. Be sure to chat with me in the comments and you can follow the show on social media as well. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.